Hey folks and welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about the ASR or the Asset Strength Reversion Algo. So the ASR is a mean reversion strategy. So what it's doing is it's analyzing the price feed of whatever asset your broker has and it's identifying attractive prices for that asset based on historical value for that asset. And if we look at a visual representation of the decision making engine, you can see it uh, just here. Okay, we have the histogram was essentially um, one value subtracted from the other. Okay, and then we have this green line up here and we have a red line down here. And the green line above is an attractive price for this asset. So if the histogram moves above that green line, well, then we could consider selling because this is an attractive sell price. If the histogram moves below the red line, well, this is an attractive buy price. Okay, and this is based on historical data. And this is useful to us because if you have if you have something that's for sale and the average price for that is let's say 10 euros if price goes to 5 euros well that's a 50 percent discount and that's a very attractive price to buy and if price goes to 15 or even 20 well that's a very attractive uh, price to sell and this is essentially doing the same analysis okay so if if we have I mean, everything around the around the zero line here, which is essentially the, the flip zone here, everything that moves around there is is a pretty normal price. But when prices go above and move beyond the green and the red line, these are very attractive buy and sell prices. Okay, so this is essentially what the robot's doing. If we have a look at the configuration, we have a few different settings. So the first setting is the execution interval. And this is set to um, uh, an integer or a, just a normal number. And it is set to 20 out of the box, which means that the algo is running every 20 seconds. And it doesn't have to run that often. You can set it to 60 or, or 500, whatever you need. Um, I'm just saying that it doesn't have to run every second, okay? Because the algo is typically trading let's say hourly, four hour, daily and weekly uh, candles. And so if it's running once an hour or maybe once every 15 minutes, this is also just fine. But every 20 seconds, that's fine. This also ensures that the data is refreshed on a very regular basis. Then we have the software keys. And here we have two values. The first one is the product key. And this is the value that changes on the first of every month. And then you have your private key. And this is the number that was issued to you when you signed up to use the algorithm. We have the risk. Okay, so we have um, a, a setting here that says live account warning. When this is set to true, the algorithm will warn you if you are trading a live account. Okay, and it'll display a warning up here in the top left hand corner. And this is just to make sure that if you accidentally click onto uh, a live account when you thought that you were trading or testing on a demo account, then you'll be made aware of this. And you can simply disable or enable this setting, the default setting is enabled. Then we have a lot size. This is for static lock sizes. If you want to trade uh, mini lots, then you simply put the value in like so. Um, if you are looking to to trade a dynamic lot size, well, then you want to look at this value here, which is balance risk. And so what it's doing here, it's looking at the balance of your account. It's looking at uh, the value here and it's calculating uh, in this case here, one quarter of a percent for each position. Okay, and if you have a max lot size here, let's say that you don't want to trade anything over one mini lot, then you simply set that value here. Okay, so it's important to note that we are using um, normal decimals here. So 100% is 1.0. Okay, 10% is 0 0.1. And 1% is 0 0.01. Okay, so if you want to go below that, well, then you have to move one decimal point out, and then this this would be um, half a percent. Okay. Then we have something called a, a a stop multiplier and a target multiplier, and stops and targets are based on volatility, and so the volatility for the time frame that's being traded is multiplied by the stop multiplier, and this is the size of the stop loss. And the target multiplier takes the value and multiplies it by this value, which is three. So that'd be three times the volatility of the time frame being traded, and this would be the target. Then we have another value here. This is the pair exposure. This is telling the algo how many positions to open for each symbol. And we are setting this to one because this makes perfect sense to do. 
uh, we also have currency exposure so if you want to ensure that you're only trading uh, four currency pairs maximum four currency pairs where the American dollar is traded on either side of that well then the setting here will ensure that only four positions are open with the American dollar anywhere either a base or a cross currency and you can reduce this to for example two in order to reduce your exposure to any one currency we have enable multiple trades per symbol when this is set to true rather when this is set to false the algorithm will not take two trades of an asset or a symbol per day so if a if the robot opens a trade and it loses or it wins it will not trade that asset again during that day and this is one of the, the loss mitigation uh, features in the situation that the robot takes a loss then it will not trade that asset again that day it'll wait until the next day to slow down the hemorrhaging of funds because normally when the robot uh, works it earns a, a lot of money very quickly and it's a shame to give all of that money back uh, equally as quickly in the situation that the market is not looking to revert to the mean so when you have mean reversion algorithms um, while they do work well most of the time when they don't work traditionally they'll they'll really work badly and so we want to ensure that the the bad aspect of mean reversion algos is mitigated as quickly and as smoothly as possible and this is one of the many settings that I have to do this then we have risk management uh, enable trade management when this is set to true the algo will look for opposing signals to get out of the trade okay so for this one here let's say that it would have got into the trade um, right here on the first lower histogram reading so somewhere in here and it would have gotten out of the trade right here and this little uh, one of these candles just here and so it's looking for the opposite signal in order to get out of the trade so it, it sells and it buys it back here and if we're on the other side of the market it would it would it would buy here and it would sell where would it sell it would sell here so it would hold on to this trade all the way until it moves to the opposite side so we get a sell signal okay so this is just a nice way to ensure that you get the most out of these positions then we have user confirmation when this is set to true the robot will do nothing until the user has accepted to either open or close the trade and so we'll just present a pop-up box a confirmation box asking you do you want to open or close this trade and then you can say okay or cancel uh, enable trailing stops this is simply um, a hard stop loss so the size of the initial stop is reduced by the same number of pips as the trade moves into profit and here we have one of the most important sections and this is loss mitigation so we have daily loss limits weekly loss limits and monthly loss limits so the default setting is we don't want to lose any more than two percent per day five percent per week and ten percent per month and you can change these to whatever you like and if the robot has suffered losses that are greater well then it'll display a message in the experts tab that says that we are that we have lost more money than we want we're not doing anything we're waiting until things get bigger so you'll be made aware of this by looking at the at the uh, the experts tab then we have the filter here we have enable confirmation and when enable confirmation is set to true it's going to wait for the histogram to begin to turn down and it's going to wait for the histogram values to close it's going to look at closed values only not open values and so as soon as this candle right here closes then it's going to take on the cell it's not going to it's not going to um, try and get in when price is continuing to move higher because it would have I'd essentially gotten in as soon as price would have moved beyond this green line so it would have got in somewhere around here and that would have been a really bad idea but had it waited until it turned around it would have got in here instead and the trade would have worked out nicely we have enable swap filter when this is set to true it will not trade assets that are gonna result in uh, swaps negative swaps uh, greater than minus five of the base currency uh, enable range filter when this is set to true it's only going to trade assets that have exceeded their daily range for that day yeah and you can see this is the period here this is the default is set to the day so if you want to look at monthly or weekly or, or for our range information you can simply change this value here okay and here we have a uh, round number filter what it's going to do it's going to keep the robot out of trades if this is set to true until it reaches a, a pip multiple of 50 
this is quite nice because then it ensures that the robot is only taking trades at um, uh, 8550 or 8600 or 8500 and this is just a nice way to ensure that the robot's trading at psychological levels and this is the value here this is the multiple we are looking at 50 pip values if we want to change this you can you can go to 100 pip mul uh, multiples and then we have then we have the round number buffer which tells it that it's going to get into the trade at a multiple of 100 pips plus or minus five pips so if it gets five pips um, within the big figure then it's going to get into the trade then we have the trend section when this is set to true it is looking at the current period of the trade plus three so if it's looking at the hourly chart it's going to look at the trend on the on the weekly chart so it's going to look at the histogram from the weekly chart it's going to take um, a very fast um, exponential moving average of the histogram and it's going to make sure that it's trading in line with the weekly histogram which is a really powerful thing because if you're trading in line with the with the weekly with the weekly chart um, well this is where some of the bigger trades tend to stay open for a, an extended period of time okay um, we have the next section which is look back and this is I have a fast and I have slow uh, reading here and this is taking the data from the price feed and it's creating like a fast moving um, average of the prices and it's taking a slightly slower one it's uh, subtracting one from the other and it's giving us this histogram and this is essentially what is forming the histogram here then we have the mean the mean is telling us how many periods of histogram to use for the analysis then we have a modifier and the modifier is used to uh, manipulate the location of the buy and sell signal lines that you can see just here so the higher the value here in the modifier the further away from the histogram or the further away from the zero line these buy and sell signal lines will be located and here we have time frames so we have the max time frame is the weekly the minimum is the hourly so what this does is it tells the robot to scan all signals on time frames between the hourly and the weekly so you don't have to go through each time frame manually the robot will scan them for you so it'll go through all of the symbols in the market watch and it will scan each of them on the one hour the four hour the daily and the weekly here we have the next section which is allow and block section and if there are symbols there can be currencies there can be um, uh, currency pairs that you don't want to trade you can simply put them in here let's say that I don't want to trade the Swiss franc I don't want to trade Swiss franc I don't want to trade Bitcoin I don't want to trade the euro British pound then I would do something like that okay and that would ensure that the robot doesn't touch any of these so if we have Australian dollar Swiss franc it won't touch it if we have Canadian dollar Swiss franc it won't touch it if we have Bitcoin American dollar or euro it won't touch any of those and of course it won't touch the euro British pound either so you can put all of the um, sorry sorry I got it back to I got it backwards this is what it will trade okay so if you want to blacklist those and you simply put them here in the block okay so if you only want to trade the British pound then you go like that then it'll only train the British pound and it doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase um, it figures that out internally okay so if you only want to trade the British pound and the euro US dollar then you go like that um, if you want to trade everything in your market watch window which is a symbol list over here to the left besides the Swiss franc Bitcoin and the euro pound then you set the configuration like this okay and then we have trading sessions and this is important um, we have always trade which tells the robot to trade all of the time 24 hours a day if this is set to false it's going to look at the sessions okay so here we have enable Asia this is set to false so it's not going to trade uh, during the Asian session okay but the Ameri the European session and the American session are open okay and here we have some values here and so what I like to do for these is I like to go to the website if you go to the website world time buddy which is this one okay so my broker time is it says GMT GMT plus three put it like that okay so now I want to find out <clears throat> what these sessions are so here we have the three sessions we have we have my broker time we have Tokyo we have London 
So we have Asia, we have Europe, and we have the US ocean, uh, ocean um, session. So what I'm doing here at eight o'clock London, I wanna know what that says on my broker time. It says 10 o'clock. You can see just here, 10 o'clock. Let's go back to here. I set that to the 10 o'clock. Okay, in Tokyo, we are opening at two o'clock in the morning. So I go here and I say two o'clock in the morning. And for New York, we open at eight o'clock. This is 1500 hours. We're a little bit wrong, we'll go 1500 hours. You go like that, okay? And then once you've set these values and you simply say how long the session is open. And I've put eight hours for each one. So from two o'clock in the morning, um, uh, according to my broker time and eight hours forward, this is when the Asian session will be open. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Um, it can be a bit of a, um, a bit confusing to, to look at these uh, server times, but if you use the world time buddy, it makes it a lot easier to do. Okay, and so you simply put your broker time as one of them. You put New York, Tokyo, London, then you find out what eight o'clock is for each of the sessions and you put the corresponding value for your broker time in the settings like you can see here and that's it then you're done moving on we have the days trade Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and Sunday um, so you can just put you can enable and disable any of these um, according to your needs I've, I'm trading Monday Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday Friday and Sunday have been disabled this is the default setting but you can change this to whatever you like um, orders uh, we have the max spread we have max slippage and this is in points, uh, not pips. Okay, so 30 points is three pips, and this is three points, which is very, very small. So in other words, we're basically not accepting much slippage. And then here we have another one, which is the magic number. And the magic number is useful if you are using multiple instances of the robot, because essentially, if you have two instances of the robot running and they have the same number, well, then they're going to be interfering with each other's trades and introduce the, uh, a potential race condition. And so if you want two isolated instances of the robot, you have one with the magic number of one and another one with a magic number of two. And then the two will only manage the trades with the correct magic number associated to the orders. Okay, and then we have this last setting here, which is alert only. And when this is set to true, the robot will trade nothing. It'll only alert you of the fact that it would like to trade. And then you can jump on that. Then you, you can look at the trade and then you can see if it's something you would like to trade or not. And that's it. Okay, so then you take it. You go here, you ensure that the allow live trading is enabled, allow DLL imports is enabled, both long and short. And then you press OK. And then when you've done that, then you can simply go up here. Let me scroll down and you can press this button. And when you've done that, we'll open this here. Let me clear this. You'll see that the robot will, according to our configuration, scan all of these that it can see on all of the time frames that we looked at. So we start at the weekly, the most significant, and then we go down to the daily and then to the four hour. And if there's any, uh, if there are any issues related to missing data, it'll, it'll uh, type something like that and say, okay, we have uh, on the American dollar Thai baht, we are limited to 411 bars. And as you remember, we actually were looking at 500 periods. And so we do have a little bit of a, um, a data issue here. And so what you can do in such a situation is go to the broker and re-download the American dollar um, uh, Thai baht. Um, data on the daily chart and ensure that you have enough for the robot to do its analysis. Okay, when it finds um, trades, it'll open the trades and it'll make a comment for each trade that looks something like this. Okay, so here we have the first one is a time frame. The next one here is a stop multiplier, forward slash target multiplier, and then we have a bunch of um, other values here. Um, this one here, number two, and number three, these are the trend and the confirmation enabled and the others where the null, sorry, the zero is, this is where the setting is disabled. And here we have, this is the means, the number of periods that we need, and here is the modifier, the 1.337. Okay, and then it'll open the trades and we just drag any one of these on here. This is a weekly trade, so we'll go to the weekly chart. 
you can see that it thinks it would be a really good idea to sell this. And so it opened the trade here to sell. The stop went above here, which is one and a half times the weekly volatility. And the target is down here. Okay, and remember on the weekly chart, this can take some time uh, to work out. But you can notice as well that we are actually, we've actually reached the, um, the sell signal. And we started to paint these negative histograms, which is what told the robot to, to get in. So we got into this trade. And now we are expecting the price of this asset to go down. Why? Because this is historically what happens when price comes down. When it comes, when it moves beyond this dotted white line, this is the beginning of the, this is the beginning of the buy zone and this is the beginning of the sell zone. Okay, so it poked into the buy zone all the way down here. Then it went all the way up here. It kept going lower. We moved beyond, we entered the, the buy zone just here when it moved beyond the dotted white line then it moved beyond and this is where we got the signal line and you can see here that let's see where it would have gotten in it would have gotten in yeah it probably would have gotten in somewhere around here okay so we would have bought here this one probably would have uh, got stopped out um, but then a little bit later it would have saw this and it would have got into the trade probably around just around here one of these candles here okay so it's pretty pretty straightforward and this is just this is the histogram okay this is a different tool this is just a visual representation of that what we do have with this one is we do have this here and so we can actually see what's going on for the pair that we're looking at by looking at this information okay so the hypnotic ASR asset strength reversion we have the dashboard and you can see the the trend is up you can see the histogram is green which is telling us that the weekly trend is moving higher so if we have a look on the weekly chart we're looking to crawl high which you can see okay and we have the operation is a wait and so there are no signals on this right now and that is for this time frame this is for the hourly time frame but if we go to something else let's find another asset let it click in you can see here that we have the trend is down so on the weekly chart we're wriggling lower and we have uh, the operation which is wait so there's nothing to do on this time frame right now okay and so this is a this is essentially what it's doing and it's doing so very very effectively um, so if you're if you're managing these trades manually um, I think you'll find that um, that it's going to be quite useful we have many users using the robot and they are using it in, uh, in many different configurations and with, uh, with lots of um, interesting results. Okay, and so I mean here you can see that, I mean we were negative here. I don't know what the weekly chart was doing here, but it was negative and so it's not going to buy. It's not going to buy here because we're in a downtrend. It's not going to buy here. It's going to wait for price to move into the sell territory and it's going to train in line with the weekly flows because this is pink. If you see here, trend down, you could see just there. So it's telling a robot to wait and only take sell signals, as you can see just here. Good. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. Don't want to make this any longer than necessary. But if you have any questions, please uh, drop them in the Discord channel or in the video or shoot me an L. And uh, thanks for watching.